as you know, we'll, we'll have a great session today, superbly organized by Argiro and Bianca and Clarice, ABC, and um, <laughs> Daniela presenting uh, this afternoon as well. So we've, we've been joking that um, to present and organize in the Signa network, your uh, first name needs to be starting early on in the alphabet. So maybe some of you towards the end of the alphabet can take your turn in future future meetings. Um, so we'll have a session on research positionality in the morning and then on Belbin team roles in the afternoon. But today is also, well, not exactly today, but around today is also the eight year anniversary of Signa. And in June 2014, there was a very small group of women, probably only five or six, I don't recall, <laughs> in a row. And we met here at, at ECP on the courtyards. I still remember us sitting around a bench and we had a discussion about how we all missed having support um, within our institutions. So we decided to set up a network um, for female academics. And we met up for the first time officially in September 2014. Um, in the first kind of four years of the network, we, we met up about five or six times a year um, on different uh, universities in the UK. Um, and the group that attended varied a bit in composition, but generally we had about eight to 10 people attending on those, those meetings. Um, there was kind of a core group of, of people who attended regularly, and I'm happy to see quite a few of those here uh, today. But after the first couple of years, um, the network has been growing really rapidly. So since September onwards, September 2018 onwards, we had about 15 to 25 people attending um, our on-campus meetings. And then, of course, COVID hit. So we had to cancel uh, the March uh, meeting in 2020 that Lynn was going to organize. Um, and um, we kind of debated for a long time uh, whether or not uh, we would feel comfortable doing that. In the end, we pulled the plug. We needed all needed a bit of time to settle down and, and kind of um, reconfigure our working lives. But then in May uh, 2020, we had our first online meeting, which if I co recall correctly, was Argiro talking about MBTI time. No, 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 Alexandra talking about work-life balance. Yeah, I still remember the slides about that with you pulling your hair out. Um, still there. <laughs> and, and that was such a success that in June, I think we organized a second online meeting with our hero talking about how different MBTI types are coping with stress, which was very illuminative to see how different people coped with the pandemic differently. And so since then, we've been organizing meetings online, um, and uh, we've had about 16 meetings uh, online, and that also led to a much larger participation, because obviously international members uh, found it much easier to join the online meetings. And we've had meetings with up to 55, 60 people attending, but nearly always around 40. So that was a great way to, to expand the network. So given that virtual meetings are now so common for all of us, and they, they have worked well uh, for the network in the last two and a half years, we will continue to uh, offer the virtual meetings um, because it, it is a lot easier, not just for international members, not just for members outside London, but even members who are within the London area. Uh, but we do want to go back to having physical meetings as well. So for now, we've decided that we have two physical meetings a year, one in May um, and one in December to spread it throughout the year. Uh, we will plan them well ahead of time so that those of you who want to travel to London can uh, make bookings uh, for those times. But this is the first physical meeting um, since a long, long, long time. So we're really happy that we're able to have that coincide with um, our eight year anniversary. And I'm really looking forward to the presentations we'll be hearing today.